Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I can't even tell you how excited I am for this podcast. First of all, Scott, I think this is a record. We have three guests. Is that a record? Wait, I can't Mark, hear you. I mean, I, there you go. You can't hear me. No, now I got you. Okay. All right. Must be a Mac thing. Like, first of all, <laughs> Mark, like on the last one, we had two guests. Right. And now we're getting three guests. Like, what's next? Four guests? Me? I don't know. It's, it's, it's so exciting. But look, before we talk to our guests, and two of them are very near and dear to our hearts because they are coaching Land Geek graduates, giving back, so excited. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your fight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott, are you as excited as I am? Can't wait, Mark. All right, well, let's just get into it, okay? So our guests today are Michelle Davis, Anthony Napadano, and Pete Schmidt from landva4u.com. Now, I'm not gonna steal their thunder, but first of all, I'm gonna properly introduce Michelle Davis. She is the founder and CEO of A Bookkeeper For You and co-founder and partner of landva4u.com. Pete Schmidt and Anthony Napadano, I'm gonna start with you guys. You guys are land geek grads, but your backgrounds are so cool, so unique. The way you guys met, the story. Who wants to start? And tell, I'll start. And tell the story. Anthony. That's, that's always ahead. my job. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mark. And thanks, Scott. And thanks for having us here today. But, you know, the story is Pete and I met uh, when we were just children uh, back in Long Island, New York. We, uh, I was uh, around 11. He was around seven. And our families, five, ki uh, five kids each, 10 kids playing with each other every day. Uh, messing around, going through school, high school together. His father used to drive us to high school uh, in the back of his car, all kind of piled in. And uh, we had a great time, uh, went to college. Uh, we married our high school sweethearts, um, but then we went our separate ways. I went into education and moved to Arizona and Pete uh, went into computer science and he's a software developer. And he stayed in the New York, uh, Pennsylvania area. And we stayed in contact, but uh, we kind of came, our, 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 our roads came back to meet again when um, while I was in education and, and uh, working in school districts, both in New York and Arizona, I was developing a software package that would help uh, teachers uh, with assessment data and instructional uh, planning and uh, kind of needed a developer. My wife says, why don't you call Pete? So I did. And uh, we came, we actually came together and I joined his company, uh, Right Reason Technologies. And I've been there ever since for 12 years and we've been doing great things, but we ran into a bit of a sickness. We keep on developing companies and, and, and we, we started having, uh, creating all these full-time jobs for ourselves. And we said, this isn't the way we, we thought it would work out. So what we did was we said, we have to look for residual income, something we love, but something we can have other people do the work for us. Um, and we came across the book, Dirt Rich. And Pete gave it to me. I read it while I was on a business trip with him. And on the plane going home to Arizona, I signed up for the uh, toolkit, the investor's toolkit. And I said, Pete, we are gonna be land geeks. And he agreed wholeheartedly. And after that, we joined Scott in flight school a few months later, joined coaching with Tate. And now we're in the boardroom with Tate and a whole bunch of great people trying to improve our business. So that's how we came together. Uh, and now this is where I pushed the story off to Pete to tell you the rest of it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, All right. I, I get seconds. So really, um, we, we've, been, we've been doing the, uh, the, the whole program for quite some time, and it's been amazing. I mean, it really has. I'm a, I'm a very um, structured kind of guy. I want to check the box, see that things are working. And every step of the way, it was like, is it working? Is it working? Is it going to bring in the, the income, the level we want? And it was just kept on working. So we were, we were um, doing the whole thing with getting VAs, trying to not be owners of our business, which is, is, if it's the one thing I had to say, don't, I mean, be owners, don't be, don't be workers in your business. And that's, that's one of the, the philosophies that you taught us uh, along the way. 
And we were using Upwork and we were using a bunch of other platforms to get our VAs. But it's, it's funny that the side story that brings Michelle into the mix is Michelle has been um, doing my, out, my bookkeeping for all of my businesses for 15 years. And she has a team uh, in Jamaica that it basically is our VAs doing our bookkeeping. Now, I didn't think of them as VAs. So one day Michelle came up to me basically and slapped me upside the head and said, why aren't you using my people on, from my staff for your VAs? And it was like, oh my gosh, amazing, you know, brilliant moment all of a sudden, you know, popped up. So we trained our VAs. We trained them in the whole methodology with the, the whole Land Geek methodology. And, and it was great. And the, the staff is phenomenal in, in Jamaica. So that's when it just kind of dawned on us. This isn't going to be just for us. This is something that everybody can use. And, and having, you know, having that, that ability to bring on people together in one place, it's just been phenomenal. So that's what, that's what, what brought us to land, um, land VA for you and Michelle working with us and hiring great talent in Jamaica that can do exactly what we need to do. We train them in the whole process. So it's been great. No, it, it's amazing. Uh, Scott and I are using landva4u.com. Kishan, Henry, if you're listening to this, <laughs> I can't tell you uh, how much we appreciate your hard work. So much gratitude. But Kishan, I got to give it up to Michelle Davis, who, because I didn't train you. I didn't have to do anything. It was like, it was amazing. And I remember talking to Kishan and, and I'm like, what do you like to do? She's like, work. I'm like, no, no, no. I, I, she's like, I just love to work. And, uh, and, but she does, and it's her passion and, and, um, and an A player. So an A player to me is someone who puts emotional labor into their work. And these types of people are hard to find. And um, so I have to give it up to Michelle Davis. So Michelle, what's the secret? How do you find the talent and train the talent? Wait, you're on, uh, you're on mute right now. Oh, sorry. Um, I am Jamaican, so I, I've been living in the U.S. for, the, you know, almost 30 years. Um, the, the thing, I think it's our culture. Jamaicans are hard workers, and they put 150% into any, everything that they do. So having uh, that pool or just having that mentality, um, you know, to, to get to that pool is half the battle. Um, the, the people that we hire, you know, all have to have the right attitude. Um, they all have some um, some level of um, some some degree, and they all have background working with people, um, some kind of customer service skill. So we have a really great pool of candidates to choose from whenever we uh, need to add additional people to the staff. And like I said, half the battle is 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 the culture and the mentality of of Jamaicans that helps us to get that. Okay, great, great. And what would you say right now is the role? most people are looking to fill in land geek community? Uh, well, yeah, go ahead. yeah that, that would be pro marketing, marketing and, um, and intake. Uh, those marketing. are the tasks that most uh, land geeks probably didn't sign up for. Uh, and those are the ones that, that's, those are the pain points we can relieve uh, initially. And, and when I say them together, marketing probably outweighs it by a lot. But that would be second is intake marketing people the consistency uh, be able to reach reach um, through the many platforms and do it on a consistent good high level that's something that uh as land geeks we suffered from until we could you know push it off because you you, you know there's a hundred tasks to do they're all easy but to do them all consistency is the first secret to success and following the recipe as scott taught us um that's difficult for humans to do right um and uh the, the land uh, our vas are able to do that consistently and they do it with a lot of uh, vigor and a lot of, again, that heart that Michelle talks about. They want to get it done. They want to get good results. Top chef, Scott Todd. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I mean, look, I, I've been using um, parts of their services since February. And I mean, I can echo the, um, I can echo the, the drive that everybody has, you know, you know, I mean, at one point I had to decide between two people. <laughs> and like that was really a tough decision because I started off with two great team members and I had to decide I had to choose one and I'm like it was it was a coin flip and I'm not ha unhappy I'm not unhappy with the decision I made but then I'll tell you what's bad 
is that I see that another land geek is using the person that I chose to let go. And I'm like, damn, no, <laughs> why? And I just didn't need to at the time. But see, the thing is, is that the, um, to me, I think that one of the things that's there is like, I had a meeting with um, someone from the bookkeeping side yesterday. I had a, a someone who's working for me. And what's funny is that she she literally pushed back on me, right? Like, and you don't get that a lot of times from, from most VAs. Most VAs that you work with, they you say, go do it this way. And they go, okay, go do it this way. And literally she she pushed back on me and said, well, I don't, I, let's, let's talk about that further, right? So we had a dialogue about it. And I got to tell you, it was really um, very comforting to know that, um, that somebody who, who really isn't um, like necessarily on my team per se is sitting there looking at things going, well, maybe it should be done this way, or can you explain why you're doing it this way? And you get that pushback. And when you get that pushback from a VA, well, then you know you have a good VA because, and I don't care if they're doing bookkeeping or just general stuff, anytime they're able to push back on you as the client, it tells you that they know what they're doing and they're confident in their ability to push back on you. And you should probably say like, well, let's have a conversation around this and go down that path. So it's good to know that there's that, that quality there. And that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? No, absolutely. And, and I remember when I first met Pete and Anthony and, and talked to them, I think it was virtually. I, and um, I don't know if it was about which program or what it was, but then hearing about their background and it was one of those things where I immediately knew, okay, I'm probably going to learn 10 times more from them as serial entrepreneurs than they're going to even learn from me. Like I've got my little, you know, niche, like I'm, you know, like Scott and I were like, we're, we're an inch wide and a mile deep. These guys have just this broad, extensive business knowledge from all these places. So I just want to, you know, ask you guys a question. I think all the listeners can really benefit from your broad business background. So I wrote Dirt Rich as this introduction into land investing. The second book I'm writing is like Dirt Richer, how to scale your land business and all the people you need to hire in place, you know, just all the things that, that go in, in to scaling a land business. The question is, when should you start scaling? When the cheapest person you can hire is yourself. <laughs> well, we, 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 we know that the cheapest person you can hire is not yourself because it's your opportunity lost, you know, that, that when, you, when you are doing the task, and this is something that I suffer from, I think the, the combination of the team of us, we're actually very good at it. At, in the end, we all pr uh, bring out the best in each other, but we, I suffer from the possibility of getting stuck in that I now need to solve this problem and let me take it all the way through to completion. If I'm taking every single task through to completion, what am I missing? You can't possibly do all the things that we're supposed to do. So we have to be very comfortable and very confident. And everyone needs to, especially when they're starting something new, is you need to know the process enough to then delegate it out. Um, and and the, the point being, you have to be comfortable with somebody doing the job and getting a C plus at it and do, or a B at it. And as long as you're not the one doing it, because you may get an A at it, but what else are you missing? The opportunity lost is huge. Anthony, yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, and, and done is better than perfect, right? And so once you have those processes, those swim lanes, those micro streams, and you've gone through it, at that point, your value is to go do the next thing, to grow your business, and you get somebody else to follow the process. You can always go back and do an iteration, a versioning, a leveling up of that process, but get someone else to do it as you go grow the business. That's key. If not, you get caught in that stream of trying to make everything perfect, and you never grow. And by then, you usually lose momentum, and you move on to something. So process, give it to somebody, move on to the next item. Absolutely. So Michelle Davis, you've worked with all these clients through the years. Help us. What makes a good client and what makes a bad client? Like, what do we not know so that we can be the most effective CEOs of our land business and really 
get the most out of our land VAs. All okay. right, wait, wait, wait. Before she answered that question, <laughs> you took that question in the wrong way. I didn't think you were going to go there. I thought you were going to ask her who her favorite client between you and I was. <laughs> that's okay. Scott, that's, that's at the end. That's the end. <laughs> oh, early. Uh, you guys you're jumping in to, too soon. You're trying to set me up, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Okay, so um, what makes a really great client um, is are clients that actually um, follow instructions. Um, and that's not always the easiest thing to get because we are dealing with entrepreneurs who um, are doing a million things um, at a time and being pulled in many different directions. Um, or, or clients that get the best results or the clients that um, give us the information that we ask them for in a timely fashion or give us access the information we need from them in a timely fashion. If that happens, we're able to do our jobs well and we're able to give them the results or exceed the results that they expect from us. Um, When we have to chase you to get what we need, when we have to constantly be calling, emailing, um, you know, just the the staff has to be on top of you, beating you over the head to get the information, then that is time lost. And, you know, you're not going to be able to get information in a timely fashion that helps you to make decisions about your business. Um, The you know whether whether it's um, through a, a VA that is 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 doing things for the land business your day to day, or it's a VA that is doing your your bookkeeping. You know we operate on the prom- the premise that accurate records is the the map that guides the path to any business recognizing their full potential. So we want to make sure that we're getting what we need from you, so that we can give you um, the value that you're paying for. Makes sense, Scott Todd. What are your thoughts? Well, I do think that you have to commit to um, spending time with the VH, right? Like you have to commit time to it because if you don't, you're not going to get the results that you want. Like literally, it's a process to get rid of the work that you're doing today. You got to invest in that process because if not, you're not going to have success. It doesn't matter who you use. Mm-hmm. So, so Scott, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back on you. You know, considering that they're already trained VAs at Land VA for you, do you still consider the 30 to 1 ratio still the ratio, even with a trained VA? And if you could just define again for the listener what the 30 to 1 ratio is. So basically, the, the rule that I teach in flight school is, is 30 to 1. Okay. So if, it, if you're going to outsource a task, it takes you, let's say, 30 minutes to do, 30 minutes a day. Okay, think of like due diligence, for example. You, you're going to spend 30 minutes a day. Well, then you should be willing to invest up to 900 minutes with that VA to, um, to kind of get them on board. Now, it's not just not 900 minutes of training. It's not like I say to Michelle, okay, Michelle, I'm going to teach you how to do due diligence, even though they, they, they do due diligence. I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, Listen, I'm going to commit 900 minutes here, okay, of my time in working with Michelle or my VA team to kind of build the processes and the systems that will allow me to move data around, okay, because that's ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to hook them into our workflows. So as an example, you know, if uh, with, with my with my accounting team that I have right now, every Monday we're on a call Monday morning at 10 a.m. and I'm going through the work that they're doing to kind of build some some confidence in that piece. But I'm also there to answer questions for them. So yes, they're trained, but then they have questions, okay? Or maybe I have questions of the work that they're doing. So now I'm making that time commitment. As our relationship goes on, well then it's not going to need an hour of my time every Monday. It will need less because they will come up to speed on where I am. And that's what it is. That's the 900 minutes, or I'm sorry, the 30X rule is, it's about getting them or allowing the VA to to have time to catch up to the speed in which you're running. So you're running a race and you're like, come on, come with me. And they're like, okay, well, I gotta get there. But you gotta understand something, like you've been doing this. And I think that the, the biggest problem that entrepreneurs have is that it's all right here. Everything that they've oh, yeah. created in their business is in their brain. And now you got to take it out of your brain and you got to give it to somebody else. And I don't care how great you think you are at giving them that information that's in your brain. 
you're not that great. Okay. Like mm -hmm. it takes, it takes a time to, to get them up to speed. And when you invest that time, that's the only way that you're going to be successful. It's, it's an investment because you're going to get back time back. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. No. So go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I wanted to chime in here just to echo what um, what Scott is saying. Um, as entrepreneurs, and, and I am so guilty of this, um, one of the biggest struggles that I had when I wanted to scale was letting go. Letting go because you're concerned that things are going to get like, slipped through the cracks, you're going to miss things. But the thing I've learned now is two words, document and delegate document and delegate that is where i am now where i document everything document all the processes de delegate and have the tools to teach the staff to do what you know what you do or and and even learn to do it better than you because now they have the time and they're more focused on one thing than you are you know when you're doing you know 50 million things running a business so i've learned to document and delegate that's my mantra I, i'm i'm writing it down right now it's gonna be my new meditation <laughs> for tomorrow <laughs> document <laughs> delegate <laughs> so, so Pete and Anthony, we, we did a round table discussion, um, a few months ago and we were all talking about what was our favorite, um, part of the business to delegate first. Like after we did, we got this off our plate, you know, colors were more vibrant, food tasted better. <laughs> I want to know Pete and then Anthony, what was it when you got this off your plate? everything was just better and you were able to be to go up that rung as you know higher up as the ceo and think more strategically and find more opportunities to grow the business i know I, pete I, I know pete's go ahead pete do it i i hated doing deal of the week i absolutely hated it every every monday i'd be like what am i going to do now i'd be like well you know i got to get this all set up i got to get each of the pieces set up it was just like, it, I was dreading doing it every week. And, and the very first task, I, I, I basically, our first task with the VA was to say, look, I don't want anything to do with deal of the week. I don't want to know anything about email lists. I don't want to know about MailChimp. I don't want to know about landing pages. Let me train you on what I can do and then you make it better. And, and it felt so good that first week when I didn't have to worry about it. And I knew my, my, my deal of the week was going out and being done. It was just like so cathartic in that one, in that one moment. I was like, ah, and now what? Now let's move the next thing, next pain point. <laughs> All right. I love it. Anthony? For me, it was intake. Um, you know, so we could focus on the marketing and sales side to really grow the business that way. Once we had the intake process and swim lane down, sharing that and handing that over, what a relief. Uh, so you could focus on different conversations, different mindset, right, for intake and sales. So having that off my plate so I can move to the other side. And so we then gave uh, the sales and marketing, well, the marketing to other people, uh, our VAs. That was huge for me. Uh, so I could really focus and improve that, that part of the game. All right. Awesome. Awesome. I know for me, it was intake as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pete. Mm -hmm. I love doing deal of the week. You guys know how much I love to email. No no <laughs> so Michelle Davis, before we get to the tip of the week, I've got one more question because I get this question all the time, especially look, you know, Pete, Anthony, you guys just close your ears for a second. Mm -hmm. It's just between me and Michelle now. Gotcha. As much as I love working with these guys, right? And they're great guys, but we don't want their ego to get too big, right? But everyone keeps asking me the same questions like, you know, okay, like, you know, about Pete and Anthony and their background and this and that. But at the end of the day, they really want to know what can all the, the land VA for you VAs actually do besides some of the more obvious ones of maybe, well, like, you know, Pete said emailing or intake or even bookkeeping. What, what's, what does it all encompass? Okay, so uh, our VAs can do everything from the beginning of the process um, all the way through to sales assistant um, work. So from the, the list scrubbing to um, from the list scrubbing to doing the, the mailings to um, calling um, the sellers and, and, and getting that in that full intake process done to writing ads, um, posting on all the different land pages, Facebook pages, Craigslist, wherever you need things posting, posted, managing all the, the, the messages that are coming in and putting information into 
um, your, your, your mailing um, platform, um, you know, collecting those leads um, ev um, and then going all the way through to um, doing the closing documents. So every piece of, of, of everything that becomes, uh, you know, the pesky things that you think about, as Anthony says all the time, there are a lot of things to do. None of them hard, but it's just a lot. And they're able to take away, um, I'd say, 95 percent of all of that for you. The only thing we don't do currently is actually um, doing the sales but we do some of the sales assistant work so we can do everything from soup to nuts. Amazing. So it's, it's literally every aspect of the business all the way to just the very end. Right. Of sales. Mm -hmm. And, and just to, to throw on that, we also have a bunch of clients managing their personal, the personal schedules and other things that they do. So the VA is, is open for pretty much anything that you do on a regular basis turn it over to the VA. That's what, that's, that's our mantra. It's, it's always to make sure we're getting anything, anything that we're, we could, we could be focusing on revenue. We'd rather be focusing on revenue. All right. And, you know, as, as, as Pete said, our VAs are, are up for whatever you need. They're there to make the lives of our clients easier and their clients easier. That's, that's the goal. Amazing. Amazing. Well, this has been just a, such a fun interview. It's always great to see you guys. And it's so great mm -hmm. to meet you, Michelle, and nice um, you as well. And Pete and Anthony, we're gonna have to have you guys back to just talk about your your whole journey as mm -hmm. well. Sure. Um, which is which is so fun uh, to discuss because you've actually been through every phase now of Land Geek training, mm -hmm. and um, to give everybody a lot of insight into that. And then, you know, just to kind of extrapolate more about at this point in our journey. This is where we outsourced and this is how we outsourced mm -hmm. and this and this allowed us to then do this so it'd be even greater to sort of you know create that whole tapestry if you will of your of your land business um for That'd sure be exciting mm -hmm. yeah um and i know you have the time <laughs> <laughs> another business to create somewhere yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> They're becoming so, slackers, <laughs> which is which is really what we want. I mean, that, and that's the whole point of what we're doing is, yeah, we do want to solve our money problems. Absolutely. But even more importantly, we want to solve our time problems. And when you combine those two things, life just becomes so much better because you can really focus on the things that you truly want to do in life, which for most people is deep in their relationships go up Maslow's hierarchy of needs into mm -hmm. self-actualization and start having the time and the energy to, to find the meaning in some of these deeper questions of life and not just be, you know, on that constant treadmill, you know, money, 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 paying the bills, doing this and living for, you know, a two week vacation to Jamaica and, you know, and, and maybe meeting Michelle there. So there's, <laughs> well, there's more. What? It gets to be a tax deduction for them now. <laughs> there, you there you go. That's my that's my bookkeeper. <laughs> Here it is. Um, so before we get to the tip of the week, I do want to give Scott Todd the last word. Scott, any last words of advice on on just the whole topic of outsourcing? I would just say that you know, and again, this is something I always talk about, like if if you think okay, well, I've got somebody now, and they're Okay, so let's use bookkeeping, for example, okay? So we, we get a bookkeeper on involved. Well, it doesn't mean that I can just now sit back and not do anything around my bookkeeping, right? Like the, the way that I do this, the way that I get rid of the work is I do it very strategically. I look at that one thing that I hate doing. What thing I hate doing right now? Is it bank reconciliations or is it ad writing or whatever it is, okay? Like it doesn't have to be a bookkeeping example. What's that one small task, that micro task that you can't stand doing and then identify what that is and then go to someone like a Michelle or whoever it is and go, Hey, look, I want somebody to do my ad writing or my bookkeeping, but you need to have in mind that one singular task, that little chunk that you're going to get rid of. And then what you do is you get rid of that one thing. Yes, you keep doing it, right? Like this is what I'm talking about, about the 30X rule, is you keep doing everything else in that, that whole big plan, but you get rid of that one little thing, ad writing, due diligence, intake. You just get one rid of one component of it. 
And then what happens is you're letting the VA now come up to speed. And in the beginning, it might feel like you're wasting your resources. Like, man, I got this person over here that I'm not utilizing 40 hours or whatever it is, but it's okay. It's okay. Because once they come up to speed, you're like, okay, you did that one. Great. Here's the next one. And here's the next. So now all of a sudden, this is where the 30 X rule comes in is they start to, you start to get rid of the work faster, but if you just go and you go, well, I got a bookkeeper here, you guys have it all. That's the equivalent to me of like giving your newly minted teenage driver the keys to the car and go, don't wreck it. Like, <laughs> uh, dad, I've never even been driven on the interstate. You got a license, go for it, man. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it. So don't do that with your VAs either. All right, fantastic. Well, this has been great. I have so many more questions for these guys. Um, but Alas, I do have to be respectful of Michelle Davis's time. Not <laughs> Thank you. So, Pete, we'll start with you. What tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, for me, it's it's not a not a brand new book, but um, one one book I loved is Atomic Habits uh, by James Clear. It's so good because it really teaches you to look at what you're doing on a daily basis and, and try and focus on where you, you built habits, determining whether they're good habits. If they're not good habits, trying to figure out a way to break that habit and go through the whole, uh, it really reduces it to the, to the smallest subset. And when I look at building systems and building, and, and that's what, you know, the, the land geek process is, there's so many systems and it's a system you really need to break it down. And to me, the, 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 the book, James Clear, really does an amazing um, uh, way, uh, has a way of looking at all habits. It's, it's, it's remarkable how he does it. So I re highly recommend Atomic Habits to anybody who's looking for a way to how to look at their systems and to build new systems. I, I love that book. And I'm, now that you mentioned it, I'm going to read that again. That's the kind of book you could read quarterly and just pick up something else. It's, that's, a, that's a really great, great uh, tip of the week. Anthony, this is going to be a tough one to top. Yeah, it's kind, of, no. it's kind of interesting. I did not talk about Pete on what his tip was going to be. And I have also another book that almost complements the Atomic Habit book. And it's What uh, what Got You Here Won't Get You There by Marshall Goldsmith. A little bit older book, but again, something you can read. And instead of focusing on the processes, it focused on 20 habits that are more transactional and relational. Uh, that will make you more effective in those processes. Uh, and if you're, if you're into leveling up and iteration, which the land gig business is so much about, because if you're at a th your first sale to $1,000 of residual to 5,000 to 20,000, it's about leveling up. And you have to change if you're going to get there. And it's these habits that you can constantly tweak to get you better, to make you more reflective and give you necessary exercises so you can prepare your business for greater success. So I think that with Atomic Habits, if you kind of read them between now and first of the year, you could get started off with your goals for the year and be in great shape. Mm -hmm. Those are great. Those are two great books. Marshall Goldsmith has a few other books that are also really, really well done. Um, Michelle Davis. Yes. So this, yeah. What's your tip of the week? Well, my tip is slightly is kind of different and kind of kind of going in a different direction here. But uh, my tip is tax evasion is a crime. Tax avoidance is not. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is I um, bis as business owners, we need to get into doing tax planning and not just at the end of the year when you see how much taxes you're going to pay, you're, you're scrambling to, to, to evade them. So you want to hear this? Clearly, tax evasion is a crime. Tax avoidance is not. Get to tax planning. It's important. Yeah, I, I remember early in my career, someone told me a joke. Do you want to know the difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance? I said, <laughs> what? It's like seven to 10 years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's, that is a great tip. And, you know, it's so funny, Michelle, because a lot of us, we don't really realize that typically once you get to the Anthony and Pete level, your biggest expense is taxes. Mm -hmm. And so when you reduce that, it, it does move the needle. Mm -hmm. um, before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, um, I do want to just give a little love to our sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income machine, but go up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Go up there quickly. 
safely, efficiently. The tuition for flight school ain't gonna cost you nothing because you're gonna make it back 180 days or less guaranteed. Learn more, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, call, find out if this niche is right for you. All right, Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? Right, Mark, here, here it is. Okay, for, first of all, uh, we had some great tips, right? It raises the bar, but check this one out. Check this one out. And I know I, I can hear you right now. I can hear what you're going to say about it, and I don't care. So here, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> check out remoteworkly.co. I put in the chat for you, remoteworkly.co. And remoteworkly.co. Yep. So since we're talking about, you know, like VA teams, et cetera, look, this is asynchronous video meetings you can have with your team, right? So you want to send them a message, you want to screen share, you want to do whatever face, you know, Hey team, you guys are doing a great job. You go in there and you put your message in there and then they can reply back, give meeting updates, et cetera. It's like no longer, I'm thinking like no longer am I gonna have to sit on a Monday call, train the VAs, work in my team. I'm just gonna be like, I can do it on Sunday, Monday, whenever I want. And you would say, well, you can do this with Zoom or not Zoom, Boxer, but look, I think this is a better platform. Pete, oh, there you go. Pete's, I can see he's look, like, look, really? I'm gonna spend the time to make a video? Yeah. My precious time. Yes. I could just do a quick audio box. <laughs> you watch. Well, Michelle, what do you think? What do you, what do you think would be more effective? And what do you think the team would like more? A it's video CD. of Scott it's Todd chopping on a donut of in the morning. They're gonna want to see or it. audio. See? See? Of, of course they're going to want to see Scott smiley face. Right? I, face. Uh, yeah. I yeah. like it. I like it. Yeah, Monday morning like briefings it. with the team One, in Jamaica. You know, we yeah. can do it on Sunday. Hey, and then hey. if there's any follow up, we'll do it then. <laughs> yeah, it works. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask which VA, uh, if they like you or uh, Scott better, Mark. Oh. I have no idea. That was well, because I haven't done my tip of the week yet. <laughs> oh, and, oh. <laughs> so they love you both. Yeah, of course. Uh, see, but, <laughs> you know, Scott, Scott and I both know the truth. So. <laughs> Oh, it's it's okay, Michelle. We it's, we we know. Tate, <laughs> it's Tate, like, oh, <laughs> right? They love. I was like, okay, who do they love better? Right. Tate, okay. They, yeah, they love Tate. Um, okay, so my tip of the week is um, seriously, stop working in the business. Start working on the business. And not only that, Pete, Anthony, Michelle have been generous enough to give you twenty percent off on your first package. Go there, learn how life is going to be so much better. Colors more vibrant. Food's going to taste better when you can start working on the really important tasks and the really important things in your business that really drive revenue. Don't start doing the deal of the week like Pete and spending hours hating it or talking to sellers like Anthony. Who wants to hear another 30 minute story about why they bought the property, how they bought the property, you know? <laughs> Don't do it. Go mm -hmm. to landvaforyou.com forward slash the land geek. Landvaforyou.com forward slash the land geek. I'll have a link to it. And as great as everyone's tips have been, only my tip is going to save you time and make you money. So I'm dropping the mic. Landva4, the number four, the, word, the letter u.com forward slash the land geek. All right. Well, this has been great. And uh, I just want to remind the listeners, the only way we're going to get the quality guests like Michelle Davis, Anthony Napadano, Pete Schmidt from landva4u.com is if you do us three little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. Pete, are we good? I'm good. I think it's time for a hug. Thank you. Anthony, are we good? We are good. Michelle? Fantastic. All right. Scott Todd, are we good? Uh, yeah, because we know the truth. We we know the truth. We we show. do we do know the truth. <laughs> we do. 
Um, it's Tate. I, I think we right. should ask. Are we, are we gonna... <laughs> Mark, we should have asked the question differently, though. Michelle, What's different? Between Mark and I and Pete and Anthony, who are your favorite clients? Wow. <laughs> and like that, the you, call you... ends. <laughs> I won't make you answer that question. Yeah, you guys are trying to get me killed. Well, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness, you guys are and... fantastic to work for <laughs> and work with. Well, we we love working with you, and um, it's it's really it's it's really exceeded all expectations. So it's it's been a, an amazing experience, and. Um, What's even better is, for me at least, to, to even know the, the people behind it and their character makes it just so much better uh, as well. So Pete, Anthony, thank you guys for being so generous, giving back, providing so much value to the community and, and same with you, Michelle, as well. Thank you. Um, it's, you know, it, it really is, is a, it's really a gift and um, I have a lot of gratitude for you guys, so thank you. Thank you. It's been fun. We look forward to Thank doing more. You. All right. So let's do this all together. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Scott, I think we need to start doing this more with, with, uh, with them. Maybe. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I guess you'll say yes if I tell you Janelle really, really likes you like one of her favorite people all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. and, but you know, you, yeah, you, you, you know, Mark, that, that um, how much you're loved. So this is fantastic. Look, I, I'm, I'm nothing if not delusional. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thanks, Janelle everybody. And Teresa, all right. great job, guys. That's all right. right. Kishan, love you, Kishan. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks.